Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Stratford MPO Policy Committee meeting. It's Friday, September 16, 2022, 9.13 a.m. We have people participating both here in person in Rochester and remotely. So let's find out who we have. We'll start with uh, Bill in the room. Bill Fisher, Farmington. On him in Rochester. Peter Nelson, Newmarket. Tom Crosby, Maverick. Karen Golab, Milton. The Trent Casper Lee. Michael Williams, Coast. Mike Babinski, Summersworth. Dave Landry, Dover. Colin Lentz, Stratford Regional Plan. And this Stratford Regional Plan. Uh, uh, Barb. Barb Holstein, Rochester. Dawn. Dawn Jeans, Lee, New Hampshire. Steve. Uh, you got the, the chipmunk effect chipmunk. on again, uh -huh. Steve. Sorry, <laughs> but we knew it was you. Uh, Herb, Herb, you ate her own too. Charlene, Charlene Anderson, Nottingham, and Jackson, right? Jackson Rand, SRPC. Thank you, okay. Am I still a chipmunk? Am I back? You're good. You're back. All right, <laughs> Steve Diamond Barrington. Okay, staff presentation, is anything on that? You're not sharing the screen, you think you're sharing it. Yeah. Um, do people see, what do people see online there? Do you see me sharing my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think Zoom uh, abandoned us yesterday. We had some weird error and now technology issues. Um, so staff communications. None that I can think of. We have a lot of work to do between now and December 31st. Yeah, I'll say just on the commission side, um, just as a reminder, we do have a commission meeting. That's our quarterly SRPC commission meeting uh, where we talk about things not transportation related. Uh, that is next Thursday at 3.45 p.m. Uh, come prepared with your thinking caps. We will be uh, talking about housing and it will be an interactive uh, commission meeting. So uh, a lot less of uh, sitting there listening to us talking, a lot more of uh, you doing the talking and sharing your thoughts and ideas on housing for uh, your community and the region. And that is here. Yes, next Thursday, 3.45 p.m. Uh, also related, we are still recruiting for um, regional impact committee members and a, uh, another representative to the New Hampshire Association of Regional Planning Commissions. Uh, these are commissioner um, appointments. Uh, and so we have a handful of folks that have uh, reached out and expressed interest in serving on the regional impact committee and that will be on the agenda next Thursday. Uh, so if you haven't and you are interested, please let Megan know. And I did remember, we'll plug this a few more times, it's still a bit early, but on November 14th, we have our federal review with the uh, Federal Highway Administration. Um, that's an all day affair. If you want to join us all day, you're more than welcome. Um, but usually we have a, a lunch session um, and uh, uh, over three years ago now, um, commissioners are welcome for the entire day, but the lunch is sort of set up to come and um, ask questions of our, our federal partners and DOT will also be here um, and talk about your experience as a commissioner, policy member, um, general volunteer decision maker. So that's, um, November 14th. It's a Monday, I think. So around, around lunchtime. I'll break up the mouse for you, Dave, just as a, I want to check our um, participants because we might have people still over in the non panelist spot. 
because we're I'm not seeing. Oh, you're right. oh, that's right. Um, Sorry, I'm just not seeing our our usual DOT guys. DOT guys. Oh, yeah. Yes. I didn't see anything in the emails or DES. State on the holiday or something. State State Friday holiday. I'm inspired to take the day off. Okay. Okay. Number three, uh, I'll need a motion on the August 19, 2022 minutes. Uh, I would move. Mike and Tom, we're done. Any questions? Issues? Something, uh, you that, okay. All right. Nothing uh, to change. Bill. Yes. Don. Yes. Peter. Yes. Tom. Yes. Karen. Yes. Katrin. Yes. Mike Williams. Yes. Mike Kavinsky. <laughs> yes. Dave Landry. Yes. And Barb. Yes. Don. Yes. Steve. Yes. Herb. Yes. Charlene. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Colin, 10 year plan criteria waiting. Yes, conversation. So, continuing our, our 10 year plan saga, um, the, as you you may remember, last time we were all here, I'm sorry, this is tiny. Um, we took a look at the criteria of waiting and we'll thankfully requested a bit more time for people to submit their uh, additional scores. Um, and, and here's where we are as of uh, 9 2, uh, second, uh, September 2nd, and I haven't gotten any more. Um, so wanted to, this is our uh, second look at this. Uh, and these numbers will be input or um, after after their approved input into our our scoring system, so they they changed a little bit. Um, equity, environmental justice, and accessibility uh, got a boost, as well as natural hazard resilience, um, and those were kind of the the, the bigger changes. You know, safety uh, safety stayed a pretty healthy chunk, as well as state of repair, um, but it, but it kind of evened things out a little bit. Okay. So um, we had a lot of discussion about this at the last uh, time, but does anybody have anything you'd like to make any observations or any thoughts about our clearly changed from the last time? And, uh, I think safety is still on top. Not terribly surprising. But please. It's kind of hard to anticipate what will happen over 10 years. I mean, um, I, I was a little stunned recently to see in Bloomberg that um, apparently the White House has been tapping the Strategic Petroleum Reserve really hard uh, because of, I guess, the war in Ukraine or whatever else um, to keep gas prices low. So it who knows what will be happening in a few months? Never, never mind ten years from now. So. Yeah, yeah. There's more to uh, more to come on that in a little bit, Steve. After we talk about this, there Don, motion to approve. No, I just made a motion to, to approve. Oh, Don. I'll second that. It's Don and Mike Williams. Bill. Yes. Don. Yes. Peter. Yes. Tom. Yes. Karen. Yes. Katrin. Yes. Mike Williams. Yes. Mike Davinsky. Yes. Yes. Barb. Yes. 
Owen. Yes. Steve. Yep. Sir. Yes. Darling. Yes. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. So, or, or do you want to talk about that? No, no. Um, so the next two have a quick question. Yes, yes. Are we going to revisit this specific topic in two years? Every two years. Yes. I know we I know we do the whole thing every two years. Are we going to revisit the average criteria weighting this topic? Yes. Fine. I just yeah. wanted to know. Yeah. So it kind of speaks to Steve's point that it's not it's not like this is we're stuck with this for yeah. a couple of cases the wrong word. It's not like we'll have this for 10 years. We're gonna be able to talk about it in two years from now to wait. Right. Yeah. yeah. So okay. yeah, the 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 point is a good one that how do you know what's gonna be happening two months from now, uh, let alone 10 years? Um, but I guess it would be in, incredibly silly to update the 10-year plan once every 10 years. So that's why we do it. Two years and then on alternating years move projects forward. Um, so we have to okay. Um, so I know that I appreciate that this is a, a complex process here, and um, the criteria that you all just voted on will go into the back end of the survey monkey that, that I sent out uh, a few times as a link. Um, and when people enter in those scores, um, so the score, the, the weights will be applied to those. So um, the score in the safety category for each project will be weighted, you know, a little bit higher than, than the other ones. It'll be weighted at 23.8%. Um, so, and again, this is the first round of, of project scoring so that we can send a list to DOT and we'll have between now and March 31st to talk about those projects and, and score them at least one more time um, once we get information from BHB about the costs of the projects. Um, and I'll talk about that at the end, but I wanted to go through the projects in, in a little bit more detail. I did this with TAC and they appreciated it um, just uh, to make sure folks can, can kind of visualize these things and if, if folks from the communities have any questions on those um, or um, uh, additional feedback, then, then that's appreciated. Can everyone see that? Uh, are you, are you going to talk specifically about the are you going to talk about the projects first and then some of the because I have some questions on the survey monkey weightings and how they line up with the other criteria. So I'm just I don't know if we we can talk about that now since we just yeah, talked about the weightings. Let's yeah, so right so I went through the whole survey monkey survey and I noticed that um, you know some of the categories don't actually um, I guess match up cleanly to what the categories and subcategories were the weighting. So for example, like you had safety, you know, we had safety and mobility. You have one category, safety and mobility, and then you had safety need and you had safety impact, right? And then on the categories we had, you know, there's a safety category that we all rank. And then there's, uh, you know, then there's two subcategories under safety. Um, and sort of the uh, text and the verbiage that you put together on Survey Monkey and the questions, they don't, it doesn't, it didn't really completely line up one to one with the subcategories. So it was just a little confusing because I was going through it. I was going through each one and each one of the questions and trying to line it up because I get the, um, uh, one of the sections you had. You know, there's, there's two subcategories for economic development, for example. And in your verbiage, you only had one question that was listed under economic development. It's supposed to be two. And, right, so you have like under, um, I'm just looking at the survey monkey, you have like the question. Oh, let me just see. Um, 
under equity. So we have we have a broader category: equity, environmental justice, and accessibility. Mm -hmm. And then under that, there were two subcategories, right? Mm -hmm. Equity, um, general equity, and then a, a, a accessibility. And in the survey monkey, you have two questions. One is equity impacts, which I'm assuming lines up with that weighting will go with the sort of the first subcategory. And then you had accessibility impacts, mm -hmm. which I assume is the second subcategory, right? Equity, environmental justice. So I would, ju I just thought that it could have been a little more clear that, you know, how we sort of have category, subcategory, and then survey monkey question that it would line up neatly, but it, it, it didn't for me when I went through it. So okay. I just had some questions there and I'm happy to maybe just sit down and break that out separately to show you what my thoughts were when I go through it. I don't want to take everybody's time up on that, but uh, you know, it's just something I noticed like you had on network significance, for example, uh, you had um, on our categories in the survey monkey, there's freight impacts, and usage need, right? And on the, let me just switch over there for a second here. Let me, on, uh, on the categories that we were looking at, subcategories, we had traffic volume and facility importance are the two subcategories. So we, in the survey monkey, you never specifically mentioned those as categories, traffic volume and facility importance. Does that make sense? You get what I'm saying? No? <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm looking at the, the survey monkey results. Um, what I ended up doing was I, I just dumped the whole survey monkey out to a PDF file so I could look at all the questions all at once because I, I wanted to think about you know, you put some verbiage in there to kind of, you know, what, what you should be considering as you rank projects. So I think what, what happened is we tried to use language that was a little more descriptive or illustrative, illustrative, um, thinking of the criteria. So instead of traffic, but under network significance, instead of traffic volume, we, we call that usage need right. so maybe we, we got a little too fancy with the language so thinking about the the traffic volumes maybe we tried to use language that made it clear why that is important to consider right in, in, in this I, it, work. it's not so a problem that, i mean if you go that, through it there's 15 there's 15 questions that need to be answered to be ranked which match up with the 15 Mm -hmm. sub criteria, sub categories. Yes. So that those match up. But what I'm saying is the language above didn't really neatly match the categories. So okay. I guess my only suggestion would be you might want to start each one of the questions with the category subcategory that it falls under and then further explain it. Okay. Because it, it got me a little confused as I was going through it because I would because I was looking I was kind of looking at both together and then I'd say, okay, well, where's traffic volume? Oh, we, oh that's in there. Yeah. That's that one. And okay. Where's facility importance? And oh, oh, I, I see that was put down. It was the same thing, that like in the Yeah, I, yeah. So, yeah, I totally understand. So at this point, the best that we can do is we can give you a crosswalk that says this criteria is question number X. Um, we cannot change the survey itself because right. we are already collecting responses on it. Um, so, but we can give you a crosswalk and then for two years from now, duly noted, we will make sure that the language um, yeah. is more clearly Or even aligned. before the March 31st yeah. vote, we can, we can, we can adjust <laughs> this and, and make, it, make it clear. So that's a good point, thank you. Yes, okay. we will yeah. be revisiting the scores. Um, when we have more complete information. Again, just as a reminder, this is just preliminary scoring. This is not the final end all and be all. Uh, and again, Karen, I know, yeah. Huh? Go for it. Yeah, and I, I apologize, I'm new to this entire process. Yeah. So I just had a question on, you know, we're, we're looking at seven projects here mm -hmm. um, and getting back to a previous comment, things change. 
are these seven projects set and that's it? Or is there a greater pool that if we're going down through these and, and we really don't think a project really fits into this type of funding, we could go back to the pool and, and look to see. That's, a really, good, that's a really good question. So the in the past rounds, what we are doing right now is for the 10-year plan. But when I go out and solicit projects, what I'm actually soliciting projects for is our metro plan, which is that pool of projects. So now that we have BHB on board, we can start building out that pool of projects so that, um, so that they have cost estimates and accurate information about the scope and things, which I wasn't as able to do before because I'm not an engineer. So I could find, if someone wanted, if someone, if someone was proposing a roundabout, I could find a roundabout that was about that same size and the same traffic situation that would make a judgment call based on that. Um, or linear feet of sidewalk, I could calculate. Um, but you're exactly right. We would want a pool of projects so this, so the TAC and this committee can then go, you know, a year and a half, two years from now, um, go and look at that pool of projects and say, here are the metro plan goals that we've all talked about in, in our, the overall vision for the region. Here's what's happening economically um, in terms of equity, natural hazards or whatever. Let's pull some projects out of that pool and put them forward for the 10 year plan or some other funding you know, there's a congestion mitigation round coming up, um, the, and then transportation alternatives. So that that is the ideal process. We just haven't had that pool of projects built out, and now we're starting to do that. Separately, the 10-year the plan every two years is an opportunity to take a look at the projects that are proposed eight, nine, 10, or even seven years from now and say, well, things have changed locally. A municipality can come forward and say, things have changed locally and we'd like to move this funding from year to year or this project just isn't a priority anymore. That happened two years ago um, when, when Rochester, there was a project on 125 or Columbus Ave for an intersection. I said, that just isn't a priority right now. The safety is okay there. We really need to make changes on Route 11 with the congestion and the safety of people pulling out of that Cochico Estates. So can we move the money there um, and just do a dollar for dollar exchange? And that, that was, that's what happened. Um, so the 10 year plan is essentially in the outer years fluid every two years. Um, so that, that's, that is always a possibility um, for, for moving those, those projects around. Is that yep. what about? Yeah. Perfect, thank you. Well, what I thought I understood from your question in part was for the purposes of this exercise today, you know, discussion today, and then the decisions that are due by, and everybody's got to do their, what's the, what's the date? November 10th. November 10th. is our first. No, no, no. You want responses back. Oh, well, the 23rd. Which next, is like an hour next, from now. You know, it's, it's, it's very close. So... <laughs> I think I, I thought what you were saying was our discussion today and what we're doing for next Friday, whether there's room to pull some project that you don't even know about, but it's currently in this other location, okay. or they're they are frozen. And you just ranking them. I think that was really what I, I thought that's what you were kind of asking. In 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 it's it's I, it's a, lo a large question, I guess. Okay. You know, so, a, a, as a practical matter, thank you, Dave. Yeah, I answered the overall question. These but are for, these for, aren't set in contract uh, concrete. These seven. No, the, those those are the projects that are ready to be ranked, and that BHB will be assessing. Okay, that's why they're. Yeah. These so those seven, projects because are, they're the only ones for that, that are ready. purpose. They're yes. set. They're set. Well, the, the bucket is set. That is, that's going to be our seven projects to be for this round to review. If, if there were a project that had been fully engineered and reviewed with a cost estimate, that could be added to this and sent to DOT theoretically. Um, we'd have, but, but again, I don't know that we can change the, well, we can't change the survey monkey this time. 
this November 10th deadline is, is from DOT because they need to see all the projects and review them from an engineering standpoint for feasibility. So Summersworth, one of Summersworth's projects has been 75% uh, engineered or whatever by Wright Pierce and it has cost estimate and actual funding. And so that's getting a peer review, but from DOT's perspective, that one is ready to go, essentially. Um, so that something like that could be added, but essentially that seven project pool is what's up for consideration this, this time around. So the choice list is set, the ranking is not. Yes. Correct. Yes, the ranking Correct. is not, and what, what will be the big change between the fall and our final decision in March is the costs of those projects. Because we can, we, can, we can talk about that as well. Um, um, but you know, DOT is seeing a 20% cost escalation for projects. So <clears throat> we're not going to be able to fund all seven of those projects. No, and, and, and I'm assuming that these seven projects uh, cannot change from now until March. The not to say that we can't rank something as zero. You know what I mean? It's one that we don't even want to well, consider for. If do I understand correctly, the the num those seven projects are the ones we'll be reviewing. Um, but the the nature of the project may change if VHB comes back with a different with a scope that says this isn't feasible. So a one of those projects may need to fall out for, for some reason, and it would go back into the pool. So next time a funding opportunity comes up, we say, well, project X didn't make it in the tenure plan, but it's perfect for this. And now it's been reviewed by an engineer and has a cost estimate. Let's put it in application. But, yeah, but for this exercise, you have to at some point, you know, put a line in the sand. So that's what this is, is the yeah. line in yes. the sand. This is the line exactly. this the sand. exercise. Yeah, this is the line in the sand. There are some of the projects, they, while they're going through the engineering review, they will be refined. Yeah. That's why this is just a first pass at scoring. So mm -hmm. we need to give DOT a short list. We need to kind of winnow down, do a first pass of winnowing down the list. Um, so that's what this exercise is. We're going to continue to flesh out the details on each of these. Uh, and then uh, early in 2023, probably in February, you'll revisit your score uh, and you'll be able to change your scores based on any new information we received on the projects uh, before we make the final, final selection of which of these seven moves forward. Uh, but this is constantly an ongoing process. So even though we're kind of drawing the line in the sand here today with these seven projects, we still want to hear about other projects um, because we still can continue to, to flesh those out and develop them. The more time you put into that um, process, the better the products are when it comes to this, like drawing the line in the sand phase. Um, so it's, if there's something for the next round, it's not too early to start thinking about it or talking about it. Um, similarly, um, there are still those discretionary and competitive pools of funding out there. Um, so if you've got something that's maybe not here on the, the list of seven, but might fit in one of those, again, bring it up and let's start thinking about it and looking at it for those separate pools of money. Yeah, project solicitation doesn't start or end at any point. If you have a project idea, there's <laughs> there's money coming down the pipe through the, uh, the bipartisan infrastructure law and the various programs Jim's talking about. So. Sooner I get it, the more we may have to collect data for it or do some other kind of analysis. So anytime give me a ring ring. It's critical for your town to get it in order and start preparing because the worst thing that can happen is that everybody in town kind of anecdotally knows it's a great project, but nobody's actually done any of the work to prepare it. And you hate to lose out and not be able to put something on the list because it's just not been fleshed out at all. All right. Any other questions on the scoring process? I know it's it's a lot a lot to keep track of with the criteria and the weightings and, and the project scores themselves. So um, I I was thanking DOT yesterday in an email that this is the the earliest that this process has ever started at the statewide level. So that 
think it was almost literally to the day that the tenure plan was approved and signed by the governor, the DOT met with all the RPCs to start our process again, because it starts on the RPC level with projects moving up. So, yeah, I, would, I just more. add one, one footnote because um, I, this happens a lot to me. Uh, I'm famous for looking at stuff like the day before, you know, it's supposed to be done and all that. And I look at it and I go, what the heck is this sentence me? And then Colin gets a call from me <laughs> and I torture him. <laughs> so I would suggest that sooner rather than later, you, you take a crack at it because if you, if you don't come up with any question about how, what does this mean? How is this working? I pressed the wrong button. I can't figure out what happened to my spreadsheet. You know, you send me a new one. I think I've called you on all kinds of different things. Talk things through. Yeah, we talk things through, but I find that uh, take, a, take a good look at it <laughs> sooner rather than later because it's tough to do on Friday. So that's my pitch. And the, the, the due date is so that I can compile everything um, and get it ready for it. TAC and policy because the October meetings are the last time we have to vote on the list of projects. Uh, it's yep. Yeah, I found I did mine yesterday or a couple of days ago, and I found I had to open up all of these sheets on my computer, had all the tabs at the top, had survey mode to here, and I kept bouncing back and forth. And I kept changing some of my stuff in survey monkey, having to go back and forth from there. Because then I read something like this, is, for instance, I sit there and trace the roads and figure out, well, if I was driving this way, safety, and I wouldn't turn here, you know, and figure it out the track, because I don't drive through there that much. I think someone's worth a nice place, but I never go there. We can change that. We can change that. Sure, it's nice. Though. But you know, I, <laughs> I appreciate it. And then as I read through some things, Goodness. I might score this one high and then score another one lower. Then as I read through it, and I said, no, wait a minute. Maybe safety should be a little bit higher here and take a point or two from here and move it over here. So, but uh, yeah, it's a lot of. Different things that you have to go through in the subcategories. And, you know, it's going to be a lot easier when the web portal's all done. <laughs> uh, I, I go the opposite. I print, print it out and yeah. do it on paper. Yeah. So, and so I, if, if for my printer, it was $75 for two cartridges. I can't afford to print yeah. it all out. If yeah. when you want a hard copy, I've got it teed up and I can print yeah. a hard copy for everyone or anyone who wants it. Yeah. Um, because I, I, I totally appreciate it. I tried to send a one PDF with all of them, and everyone's email and server bounced it because it was either spam or too big. So, wanted to walk through the projects um, before it gets too much later and give you kind of the, the bird's eye, street eye view here uh, and talk through some of the stuff that was in the project snapshots. Um, so, starting off on the Summersworth project at Sunset. Uh, and West High Street. Um, let's go. Looking at, at this intersection in particular, this way to downtown, you've got schools and churches over this way, um, lots of residents this way, and over this way to one way um, and uh, towards uh, Rochester. Um, so, utility pole in the middle will have to to have to go uh, under under some of the potential things to be done here. Um, not clear exactly what is the most uh, appropriate change, um, but a heavy emphasis on on pedestrian crossings and their safety. Um, it, it's a little you can't really see it because the only Google Street View image I could find that was decent um, was in the middle of paving. But there is a, a crosswalk that goes from the sidewalk here and and ends in uh, no man's land over here. Um, so a lot of folks, um, anecdotally, but good observation of lots of folks coming from uh, these neighborhoods and surrounding to, to schools and to church, um, and it, it is, it's near downtown in a resident, residential area, so lots of people walking um, to where they need to go. Uh, I, think, I think that was all I had on on those, anything you want to add? Mike? Uh, <clears throat> what's not in the photo is, uh, but I think it's in your aerial. So the next street over is Sunset Drive. 
and yep. that's in proximity to Maple Street. And that queue and that that skew, oh, yeah. I think, is a better point. Creates um, sight distance challenges and viewing from traffic heading um, east and I'm sorry, uh, yeah, east and west on uh, Route 10 or uh, West High. And uh, we've had near misses and a few accidents that uh, could have been serious. Um, and this was a candidate uh, location for a traffic safety audit a couple of years ago, working with Colin. We've been, I think been uh, unfortunately unsuccessful getting, getting it to, to be funded uh, as a safety audit project, but still worthy of uh, uh, really redesigned with you. Maybe a roundabout uh, feature, but maybe um, a closing off of one of those legs, such as Sunset Drive. So BHP is working on potential scope elements, whether it's it's a roundabout would be kind of the, the, the big version of the project or some sort of separate um, pedestrian facility that is slows traffic down uh, and makes it clear that, you know, because 236 or West High Street is, is a straight shot all the way over to 108. And so you can you can be flying into town here and then suddenly realize you're in a residential You're in a residential area. area. So I travel that a lot and I've had several close calls, especially yeah. from sunset coming off Maple. Yeah. Yeah. So this 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 view here is a is a little hard to tell, but if you're driving on West High Street this direction. You know, you've got vegetation and stuff here, so people are parked here and having to crane their necks to look all the way around. And they're looking also at Maple Street. And looking at cross traffic coming right. over here. And, <clears throat> and yeah. so a good old five-way intersection in New Hampshire. Um, <laughs> you know, not so long ago, had horses and buggies. I mean, you went to I think you're far reach. <laughs> <laughs> um, so next one down the list. Uh, question, a question on that one. Um, um, are, are there times in which um, times of days in which that the, it's really bad versus other times? Do you know? That we don't have detailed data. Um, so uh, ideally, we would have found a place to put a, a pedestrian counter out here, and that's still definitely a possibility. Um, you know, I would suspect. During the week, it's it's morning and evenings where you have walkers um, going to and from school students, um, and then you also have bus uh, the school buses. Yeah, definitely during uh, late afternoon. Yeah, uh, or early morning with uh, there's a nearby school, uh, the high school, middle school is not too far away. Um, there's another elementary school that's close by. So, you know, from like say seven to nine, and then picking up again from three to five. Probably is those peak times. Yeah, so I think conflict. pedestrian and vehicle traffic are both peaking at the same time. Which is okay, thank you, that's helpful. Thank you, Mike. So, this is the, the Main Street Complete Streets project down by the river, also in Summersworth. This is the one that's been engineered um, or uh, 75% design thereabouts. Yeah, it's um, probably closer to 65, 65 at this point. We still have to do some uh, inspection of the utilities. Yeah. TV inspections. So. so our 10 year plan funds would be funding the, the transportation um, elements here. So roadway, roadway improvements, um, uh, pedestrian facilities and so forth, but there are also utilities improvements that are, that are planned in Summersworth's capital improvement program. Um, this, this project kind of has a lot going on and a lot going for it. You, you're right in the downtown. It would, it would be a complement to the, uh, the high street uh, downtown stretch that has already, already been developed um, with, with sidewalks and bike lanes and, and lots, lots of storefronts. The formerly Eclara um, building is being looked at for a mixed use conversion with residential um, so you're going to have a lot of people um, crossing back and forth along here. Currently, you already have um, folks crossing. The, there's a railroad track. Uh, this is New Hampshire North Coast's line. Um, uh, a lot to be a lot to be developed along this street as far as uh, a kind of another economic main street. Um, 
like I said, you have the river, um, so there it's a nice, a nice place to walk uh, and and be um, be in this section of town. Um, so it it this ties a lot to economic development, all those things. Yeah. When I was scoring it, I was just a little confused about what exactly, like I understand the area and the like, mm -hmm. but, but what is going to happen to it? What are we trying to pay for? That, that's a good question. Mike can speak I, more to the details, but I think just if you think of uh, complete streets is just thinking about all the potential users rather than just uh, the vehicles. Okay. So the, the super duper nitty gritty details would be developed um, during after the project is funded, but it would be improvements to, I think there's sidewalks on both sides, I, I believe, but there may be opportunities for a mid-block crossing. Um, I know medians are tricky with snow plows and stuff, but some way to make it clear again that this is not a highway thoroughfare. It is a place where people are crossing from where they live in the mill building to get coffee across the street or that sort of thing. Um, so the short answer is we don't have those details just Complete yet. streets mean something in this world I've seen too. Grasp onto. Yeah, it is. I, it's it's a philosophy, a okay. design philosophy, rather than a prescription. Great. Um, I will do more research. Okay, and it yeah, it, it, it's documents. We have a oh, document yeah. on that, and we can circulate that so the complete streets. It comes up often enough. Yeah, I just it's which, uh, new for me. Yeah. Well, it's it's okay. very important because it often not so much right here, but there's plenty of locations along the 108 corridor where multiple towns have interests in the same project. Because you, you can't just drive from one town to the next, and all of a sudden, you know, there's a complete change in where the sidewalks are, and the bike lanes disappear all of a sudden, and the signage makes no sense. You know, That's so there's been a lot of coordination, especially yeah. along the 108 corridor. Yeah. 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 So, so thank you for that question. I was just say, just building on what Colin said, Katrine, the uh, project really is probably traditionally you <coughs> might look at it as a rebuilding of the street. Okay. Everything from utilities to drainage um, <clears throat> to sidewalks to curbing, okay. bike lane, landscaping. There'll be opportunity for storm uh, water treatment features. Uh, and then some traditional things like water and sewer line replacements, and maybe some stormwater replacements. Um, it builds off the downtown improvements in downtown Summersworth with regard to pedestrian and decorative lighting and things like that. So it's pedestrian friendly uh, more than just vehicle friendly. The 125 corridor study uh, has nice uh, depictions of what this of a complete streets concept. Uh, I don't think you can download it online, but you can check it out from the office. Thank you. Thank you for the, the kudos, Herb. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll circulate um, a couple of documents I have uh, digitally um, that look at design elements that would go into a complete streets. Um, but thank you for that, that reality check. Because yeah, it, complete streets is definitely a transportation target, um, <laughs> even though it's, it's been around a little while. So I kept yakking and didn't actually go through my slides here. Um, but this is sort of an aerial view looking northbound uh, of this Main Street section. Uh, a few more here. So here's where the, the mill building is and the railroad tracks. I hear from New Hampshire North Coast that they're really interested in eliminating uh, the, the jargon is an at grade crossing. So if the, the rail and the, the road or the, the sidewalk is at the same level, that's not so great. Um, it's better ultimately to have uh, an elevated crossing for pedestrians if you're talking about a railroad or a car. Um, so separating those grades in the jargon, they would, they would love to improve this crossing so that it's safer for, for folks when you have a multi-thousand ton piece of metal uh, rolling through your downtown. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, looking, there are lots of folks looking at this section of town and, and thinking about its future. Here's sort of a street eye view of uh, the, the Claire building and, and the streets where you do have sidewalks on the one side here, oops, sorry, too fast, um, where you have sidewalks on this side. Um, so a complete streets philosophy would look at where do we balance? Is there inappropriate to put a sidewalk on the other side? 
um, where do we have parking, if you've got businesses, that sort of thing. So not not straight wide and narrow only for or straight wide and and uh, obvious only for cars. That's the that's the is that the GE building? Yes, yeah. was GE yeah. Yeah. now called the Clara building. Oh, okay. I, having been there recently and now more familiar with this area because uh, they had a fantastic car show. It's the first year oh, yeah. for a car mm -hmm. show, the Historical Society. I gave a plug to them because I went through that and I love places like that. It's fantastic. Um, and I've had my car there and I hooked along there and I learned that all kinds of different events actually took place down in there. It's a wonderful space. So it's not, it's not, uh, we do. And, and so much more could be done because yeah. it's an enormous yeah. space. And right beyond the photo that uh, Colin has is our new uh, Veterans Memorial, yes. which is right. quite, uh, quite nice. We, uh, it's, part of it's very impressive that. design. It really is. Yeah. There's a lot of things to is, it, is there a uh, bike lane? Right now, no. There is no bike lane. There's a little yellow one. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is so much that could, could be done yeah. with it. It's obvious. And uh, I never really paid much attention to it. But uh, when you put a hundred classic cars in there and you spend seven hours there, you get a chance to look around. Yeah. It's like pretty cool area. You know, when looking at the weighting criteria, you know, some of those things are tricky because it's like, you know, you have to go back to the project. Like, I would probably ask the question, like, is there a bike lane in the planning and design? Because otherwise, I'd look at yeah. some of the other criteria where mobility and access and that kind of thing play right. in. And I'd say, well, the plan doesn't have that. So, because it, you know, it makes it tricky. Yeah, yeah. And that, that gets back to the parents' point is, the ideal future is we have a pool of projects that have been kind of gotten down to that level. And so that we're not developing the projects and scoring them at the same time. That, that makes it hard. Yeah. Uh, here's the more residential stretch of the section moving southbound from downtown. Um, so you can see ample, ample road width. Um, so that that is, yeah, so you you've got you've got parking now, but where is it appropriate to put to put a bike lane and make it connect to um, High Street, which does have bike lanes and parking? So that was the last slide for that question uh, uh, project. Any other questions on that one? Um, I will not not to uh, promote uh, one company over another, but Google Earth. You can look at Google Earth on online, and that you can do like 3D rotation and stuff. You don't have to download it software. Um, so I use that sometimes. That's what I used it for some of those shots. Previous one. Um, Durham's project uh, to convert this intersection to a roundabout. Currently, there are only stop signs for this traffic and this traffic. Um, this is moving into into downtown, so pretty wide high speed route here, 155. Um, uh, this going out to US 4, and this is agricultural land over here. Every single quadrant is owned by either the state or UNH. I believe three quarters of them are UNH. Uh, but you can say USDA, USDA Forest Center over here in agriculture. Um, so they have some state buildings, um, lots uh, of a big off campus housing development down the way here towards Lee, um, so lots of people, um, including transit, um, traveling this section here, uh, and they have their, their separated bike to head path off to the side. Um, so fairly, it, pretty obviously feasible from everyone I've talked to as far as converting into a roundabout in terms of the right way. Um, this would be, UNH is promoting and prioritizing a roundabout thinking of future traffic as it increases. Um, this might be a, a, a segment where a traffic signal might be more traditionally used, but could create um, real hazards with the, 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 the speed and the volume of, of the traffic. Uh, so that's the plan for that thing. So here's the, the street view looking away from campus, the off to your left here, and here's the multi-use path. Um, so there's a a slight cue uh, from uh, UNH has various facilities off to the right. Um, so this would be a roundabout looking 
probably something similar to the one that is just closer to campus along 155, uh, where you have pedestrian facilities um, and it, it slows people down. Wait a minute. So, Colin, um, I'm very familiar with this, this part of town. I, I you go through there quite a bit. There's so many roundabouts, I, and this is not a very... I mean, yes, there are there's some things around it, but it's not the level of development that the rest of um, of the area is in. I'm I'm concerned about uh, how how much of a disruption. I, ironically, I'm the one saying uh, car traffic is going to be unnecessarily slowed down without much of a benefit in this location. I think. Well, so the. This is sort of a proactive project where the traffic volumes right now probably wouldn't warrant something like a traffic signal, um, but, but UNH is being proactive in thinking about the future traffic volumes as they have in the past two years dramatically increased the number of students living close to campus. So fair, fair point, um, there isn't a, um, of their own admission, there isn't a, a critical need for this today, but thinking 10 years in the future as they as they get more and more students living close to campus, that's what they're anticipating. Maybe they could meet the needs they want simply by lowering the speed limit in that area a little bit. Yeah, uh, the, yes, that, that's a good, a good thought. Um, I'm happy to, to talk about speed limits and all the, the, the challenges around those. Um, I guess I would argue on that stretch of road, you can change the numbers on the sign, but it's not going to change people's behavior on, on 155. But but point taken that there's probably something in the interim to do where the, the roundabout is the, uh, the, the the nuclear option, not to use the dramatic, the mm -hmm. dramatic term. A question on that also. Sure. So total enrollment is not going up. In fact, I think it's going down. So what does it matter if they live close or far? They still out of driving the same road to get in once they get there, right? Well, I don't know. There used to be a lot more students that lived in Dover, for example, and they put so many apartments down there. Sure, but if you drive from Dover to Durham, you drive that road. If you drive from the apartments to Durham, you drive that road. I think it would be right there, because that's further towards four, isn't it? Well, I guess the, the, the point is made that if, whether you live right here or 20 miles in this direction, you're still be using a roundabout. Um, so I think they're thinking about just an increase in traffic on this section of road overall. Because of 155A, that's the road that's seeing the increased traffic? Because of 155A and also, I think I would have to check with, with Steve on this, but uh, Steve Pesci, but as as things get more congested or as things get busier in downtown, more people are using this alternative entrance to campus going around US 4. Um, so as the, they have done so much student housing development in downtown, I think I wonder if more people are avoiding coming through downtown and going around the long way here. But, but that's supposition on my part. So. The, you, you have a good point that it doesn't matter how far people are driving, that isn't the main justification. So. Have the other, uh, the other couple of roundabouts, a couple of roundabouts there on that. So right on that down the street. Here's the one. Roundabout, so, roundabout. Yeah. What, um, uh, did they come through this process or were they another process fund them? UNH funded that. Well, that was going to lead to my last question. Is this, is this a Durham project, a UNH project, or both? Together. I, when I do project solicitation, I meet with the town and UNH. So. And, they, and does UNH itself have skin in the game in financial project? Yes. So Durham? Yeah, it'd be their, their right of way. And this is this is a okay. was prioritized by the town and and, and mm -hmm. Okay. okay. I'll offer this too. I, I do that intersection all the time. I'm a little bit anxious about having roundabout roundabout. It's so close. That's mm -hmm. a lot mentally. Um, but we drive this area totally differently at different times of the year. So in the summer, I take mm -hmm. that all the time. The number one reason we use that road is to get to the, um, from Lee to the high school. Mm -hmm. And we know if it's a certain time of day, you cannot get to the high school because that line is so huge. 
-hmm. So I, I definitely mm -hmm. think there's a need for things to move, but I think it's also timing and understanding. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's sometimes not all the time. In terms of the, the traffic volumes? Yeah, I mean, it's really eight o'clock in the morning. And that is a disaster. And we know just to avoid that together. So there'll be a huge line here, you mean? Yeah, it'll go on. I mean, and and because you're trying to turn into a road, or if you wanted to get to the high school the other way, we all know you cannot take a left turn. Mm -hmm. You just don't even think about it. Go, we, we go the other way. Um, okay. before. That's valuable to know. And the thing with roundabouts is they only they only really work when if you have a cross, if you have an intersection like this, the the traffic volumes are equal. So if you if you were putting if this road was let's just say for the sake of argument if 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 this was let's say this is quadruple the volume of this road yeah and if Mast Way and 155 155A were the same you would have trouble justifying a roundabout a roundabout will help you with the the queuing on on this road if, if the volumes are equivalent. So that's that's good to yeah, know. Yeah, it's always, well, it's always eight o'clock morning this way, or if there's an event, it's all that trying to turn on to 155A from Main Street. Oops. So so yeah, it's definitely just long lines and it's everyone else is moving quickly. Okay, so that's good to know. I'll pass that along to the BHP and SD as well. Thank you. Right. Any other questions? Yes, this is this is excellent feedback. Thank you all. Um, Durham also put forward a uh, the town of Durham um, put forward a a sort of proactive project. This is Durham Point Road uh, as you head south on one way out of town. This this route is sort of a loop that is popular by uh, local res well the local residents that live on this road is their only road, um, but it's also popular. By, by cyclists and, and runners because it's a nice twisty shady country road um, that is makes it also very diff, uh, a little bit uh, unsafe for for non motorized users. So Durham is anticipating needing to do a full road reconstruction reclamation of this in the next ten years. So they want to get some input from uh, BHB about ways to make this safer. For uh, from a multimodal standpoint, because it is it is a nice road. Um, it goes along along the water, um, nice shady residential area, nice and quiet. Uh, depending on what time you're you're on it, um, um, but it's it's a little hair raising um, with all the twists and turns. So that's they're hoping to get some uh, potential alternatives and recommendations from BHP. That's essentially the, the nature of the project. Um, this is separate, but Durham is also looking at Crumman Creek here, the bridge where it is in a sea level rise um, zone. Uh, so they're, they're looking, looking at that where a loss of that bridge, that is unlikely in the next few years, it's a fairly new bridge, um, but thinking about the future with that, that would cut people off. Um, this is about the halfway point from the connection to one away by Durham and the south southern connection um, right up right outside New Park. What you can't see in this map, I, I drove it recently to uh, hunt for apples. Um, there's a lot of grade changes. Uh, so my my general idea around um, safety of bicyclists is simply uh, sight lines. So if it, if it were straighter, which you couldn't do because it's so expensive to, I mean, it'd be very very hard to make the road a lot straighter. Um, I think the main thing is sight lines for, for um, bicyclist safety. I, I would agree, Steve. So yeah, good, good point about the terrain is pretty hilly as well as twisty out here. So if you're coming up a hill around a curve, that could be a worst case scenario for, for oncoming traffic. Is that, is that the same road that has substantial amount of, uh, I don't know, sewer lines or with an enormous amount of traffic uh, construction that went on. I don't know. Maybe that's not sewer. the same one. Guessing it's septic based on where it is, but uh, not sewer. Not sure. I'm water. Water. Water, maybe water, it's water but. Way to Newmarket from Dover coming through Durham. Oh, are you thinking of the 108 
I guess I'm on the long road thinking about it. You might be thinking of the one away shoulder blade. Yes, yeah, I guess that's what I'm thinking. Oh, never mind. Yeah, never mind. That, that, that was a massive <laughs> project. Okay. Yeah, that, that one uh, balloons a bit over two decades. Um, so, uh, Lee has two projects. This is a uh, proposed separated multi use path uh, between the uh, Town Hall Lee Library complex that is being renovated or will be in the future. And the uh, rec fields down here, there's, uh, I think you guys still have the farmers market. It shows up on Google Maps anyway. Yeah. Um, then you have Mastway Elementary School, which is part of Oyster River, um, a, uh, a church, and a couple of houses along here. But the proposal is to have it on this side of the of 155, um, where the right of way conflicts are few. We will need to consider how to address um, uh, driveways, primarily here at Mastway, where you have a bus only pull out and pull out and in during the day, uh, the mornings and evenings, um, and then the church, uh, the church as well. Um, there's no house, is that just a parish house which is owned by the church? Okay, yeah. Um, so no, no residential, that's good. Um, so uh, I've talked with Katrina about how, what the best approach here for biped improvements, and again, creating the, the obvious image for drivers going through downtown that this is not a thoroughfare, this is a, this is a place where people are biking and walking into the community center. So, by the multi-use path is great because it, it separates the pedestrian traffic from the vehicles. A sidewalk is great, but it's still right along the road. Um, uh, uh, bike lanes are great in, in certain contexts, but it's just paint protecting you from, from the vehicle and it doesn't do anything. So a separated path would allow um, for bikers and walkers, especially students who will be visiting the new library um, regularly, um, the, uh, the, the other benefit of the multi-use path over a sidewalk in this case is Lee does not have any sidewalks, and so new sidewalks require um, the purchasing of a plow or other equipment and other investment. So a, a multi-use path like this can be plowed with a, um, a blade on a pickup truck that's already in operation. So. As a Lee resident, I'd add that it's really important to have more safety in this downtown area. It's unfortunate that this doesn't go all the way to Little River Park because the from the library to Little River Park is perhaps the most hazardous of all, both with traffic speed and lack of sight line in a hill. Well, and that, but but to Don's point, this is right near. So this is sort of street view, and I'll get to your point in a second. Um, so the, the bike lane or the, the path will be going along this side here where there's, there's plenty of right of way along most of the sections. Um, here's right at the school where you can see the driveway for a student drop off and pick up. Um, and that, so the, there, you can see down in the distance here, there's some trees along the road. Um, the utility lines are on this side, but they do switch eventually. Um, so that we'll have to deal with utilities. Um, but fairly flexible options here, I think, for, for this proposed project. And, and I think we broke it up into two parts because that next part is tricky, but this is to have that flow yeah. for that. So this is kind of the low-hanging fruit section. Okay. I think it does connect to rec trails that you can walk all the way over to the safety complex, the public safety complex. And currently but, the kids have to be bused from the mass way to the library yeah. because um, it's too dangerous to walk. And also, I think in the 80s, a child was hit and killed in front of Mastway, which is why we don't allow children to walk to Mastway. And, um, and so it's a very, it's a dangerous road, and we really can't um, have the, the kids participate in the, in the town things. There's also a historical society there and yeah. other things they can't just walk to during the school day. So I think the, the kids getting bust it's a third of a mile is sort of a dramatic yeah. illustration of the value. Um, so to, to Don's point, I, this is the only section where there are residents and I think a business of some kind, um, but it would be awesome if the trail could connect over here. And then what Don mentioned is just down, down the way here, um, rec fields that are, and that are used as sort of a community gathering place and, and events kind of like the car show that, that Dave was talking about. 
Um, so the other project that I, I like to call the situation um, <laughs> is this five foot triangle. The multi-use path would be starting here um, where the, the parking is for the, uh, the town hall and, and library. This is again, uh, it used to be a cart path um, and is now a, a, a quote unquote modern roadway where you have redundant, uh, redundant crossings here. Um, and this is a good example of a case where there have not been any fatal crashes, thankfully, I think because it is so crazy. Um, people slow down because it's just insane. Um, you have, every time I go out here, I think I, I feel like I see a cyclist along this road in the good weather um, because it's, it's lovely bucolic fields to the south and the north and cows and, and old farms and stuff like that. And it's nice to ride your bike. But we're, we're looking to, uh, VHB is going to be looking at alternatives for consolidating the different intersections here. Um, and in the future, uh, they will be also be considering um, uh, how to connect pedestrians because this is an insane barrier as a pedestrian. They're on the sidewalks and no reasonable person it's unreasonable to expect pedestrians to, to traverse this area, which is sad because it would be great if the students could or residents could walk along here to that uh, the field that's down just a quarter mile or something down the road. Um, so here's Street View. Because it's such a big intersection, I, this is the best I could do. This is looking south. The town hall is behind us. Um, there aren't any historic issues in the center here. There's just kind of a big tree. <laughs> Off to the right is the public safety complex and all the bucolic fields all the way down to New Market is, is off to the, to the left here. Um, I think that's the only street people I got, yes. Uh, so as you can see, heavily skewed, no pedestrian facilities. Don, are you trying to chime in? No, um, but definitely, uh, something needs to happen has needed to happen for a long time and one good option would be to not allow semi trucks to come on 155 force them up to the traffic circle and not come through this little downtown because they're a huge hazard that, that's a good point for, for dot uh, I was told by an old farmer in town that we didn't have that truck traffic until um, the distribution center went in for Walmart and Raymond, and then it grew exponentially. But this, this shouldn't be a shortcut for uh, truck traffic. It just doesn't belong in this village setting. So that, that's a really good illustration of the need for interregional planning and so forth that Raymond is out of our, our area, but if truck traffic is gonna have an impact outside of that area. Um, if the truckers are gonna avoid a roundabout or some other kind of thing and go exactly. through the downtown, yeah. then that's, that's, that's a problem. The most um, dangerous roundabout in New Hampshire is right there in the- DOT is evenly against building any more roundabouts like the one in Italy, apparently. That's a wise choice. They don't like the, the double A roundabout. Um, any other questions on this one before we move on to the last one? So reach out to me if you have any questions that come up uh, looking at the sheets. Uh, save the, the craziest for last. Um, New Markets intersection here at 152 and one, uh, 108 uh, is another. There are lots of businesses and residents here who have seen close calls every year over the past few years with pedestrians. Um, and this has kind of been in discussion and development with, uh, for over the, since the time I've, I've worked here. This has been new, one of the new market's priorities. So this is the kind of fully developed pie in the sky version of how to address that situation. Um, the proposal is basically to close this lane um, right here. So the eastbound lane would be closed. Westbound traffic could continue along 108, but eastbound traffic would have to 
divert down here and, and come up through here. Um, this would, I'll, I'll start by saying, any, if this project goes forward, it's going to need public input at the local level um, ad nauseum. So to, to get people's thoughts, I, I floated the idea to the new town planner of doing a, a demonstration version of this project so you can get Jersey Barrier and other impermanent things and do a, a, a practical demonstration of what a new traffic flow could look like. Um, and you don't have to throw millions of dollars at it only to find out that it doesn't work. So that is an option here. This is complex. Uh, BHP's response was challenge accepted uh, when, they, when they saw this. Um, there is a steep slope here. Um, so putting a traffic light here would mean big emissions from trucks heading up 108 that have to chug from zero up to you know five miles an hour even going through the years. Um, I have I had concerns initially that closing this street would create a, a slingshot effect with people coming down 108. Um, the, the downtown is up here. Here's sort of a 3D view. Um, you can see the dense downtown, um, and you can see there's already an improvement here for, for traffic flow. We have to improve signage so that people have as much warning as possible that they can't continue. Um, closing both lanes here wouldn't necessarily be an option. I, I did worry about people coming here, realizing what had happened, and then driving angrily through all these residential areas because they, they're convenience had been uh, abridged. Um, so there's a, there's, this intersection is in pretty good shape. There's already a signal mast arm holding a signal for uh, emergency vehicles here. Um, you can see a cyclist um, braving this coming, this is coming up the hill into downtown. So this is the section of, this is the lane that would be closed. I think that's me. <laughs> Here's the business that has a, uh, a street view of all the, the close calls here with pedestrians. You can see there aren't, there isn't a way across the street. Um, there's a lane going down to the, to the riverfront. This is looking up the hill. You can see there's a, a, a beacon. Um, you can't see cars that are coming over here that want to make a left turn or a right. Uh, you can't make a right turn, I'm sorry. Um, just a whole host of issues, including no right of way. It's all it's all taken up with with sidewalks and road. Um, so obviously a roundabout's not. Another way. interesting part of this that really hasn't been mentioned is just below this. If you were coming this way, that whole section of road there has been completely underwater multiple yeah. times with flood events. Yeah. So when when we talk about sort of hazard mitigation, this project actually doesn't help that because now if you're rerouting traffic around it, it's supposed to go that way. In the event of a flood, it's out anyway. You'd, you'd have to create special measures to get around there in a flood event. That's Moonlight Brook, right? Yeah. So I, I think Newmarket does have a, a project to improve the outlet, but but still there there is a brook under this road right. um, that we have pictures of cars floating away um, that where the, the flooding that Peter's talking about. Up. So it's super low here and it's very high up here. So it's a, a little bowl that fills with water. Um, so we haven't looked at that from a traffic modeling standpoint of what happens if we lose one away um, if the road crumbles. Um, it'd be very bad, is, is the short answer. Um, so here's where the closure would be. You can see there's storefronts and parking is basically just <coughs> parking over the fog line. Um, so my my, my super crazy idea is what would happen if we closed this street and made it for pedestrians and outdoor dining? Um, I, I, from a traffic standpoint, it's a non-starter, um, but I see a lot of value in creating more of a human space rather than a car space. Um, well, those businesses all need parking there too. There's so the no parking. Park. Yeah. And so you have re restaurant, there's a coffee shop right there that red dot is, and then on the left, right at the corner is two restaurants. Mm -hmm. There's no parking for any of them unless you're on Main Street and have to walk up. So I'm sure they would, anything that enhances 
So the pedestrian traffic or even a, an F one or two extra places to park would be highly welcome. <laughs> So there's a there's a, a lot of the people, and that's unfortunate, but isn't it true? A lot of the people that are on this road are just passing through to head down the strata or whatever. Or, or, or into downtown. I would, uh, yeah, that's a good, a good thought. But this this so downtown now, oops, sorry, has a has a complete streets type of development right. where they're there are very obvious crosswalks and so forth, but oh, this is part beautiful. Though. I mean, that is the most dangerous place to enter downtown. When yeah. you yeah. come right to the end of that <laughs> intersection, you, it's, bl it's blind on both sides. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I know exactly where it is. Yeah there's, a, yeah, there's a lane you can't see just after this dark shadowed building down to the water. Um, so people are going to drop out their kayaks or the, and it's a, a residential mill building. Um, so, yeah, and of course, with the hill, people accelerate because it's a hill. Um, and by the time they get to the top of the hill, it's too late. There's no way to, to slow down. I imagine in winter, there's a lot more accidents because mm. going up that it, hill. No, the accidents aren't going up that way. It's the cars coming in this way and, and this way. Mm -hmm. It's the da most dangerous part. Coming up this way is not a problem. It's, it's, it's the collision. Uh, coming, coming that way, where that red, where that orange part is supposed to be blocked up. Cars coming that way are the ones that are in danger. Two cars go to the same place, two places, and they can't see each other. So um, the the scope that I presented to DOT and got the or got the green light from DOT as far as it's not totally crazy is is closing off this <laughs> lane. Um, you know, keeping an eye out for historic things on this corner. Um, both of these intersections are in fairly good shape, would need some signage, probably not any signalization. Um, but again, this is sort of the, the full plan for the, the biggest possibility will have to be heavily vetted and reviewed by, by city council and residents and people using the road. Um, so, Colin, um, you just said not a sing signal at the southern location. There's often a lot of traffic on 108. And especially with the sharp angle of that corner, uh, I think there would have to be a signal at that southern location if for anyone wanting to turn left. Yeah, so DOT was considering that there, this would have potentially have to be signalized. There, there already is a, a signal arm so that the conversion would be simple. So we don't have to change anything about the road configuration of either of these sites. But you're, you're correct, this would likely be signalized if this goes through. Would the um, would a tractor trailer truck be able to navigate that sharp turn? Um, that so that's a good question. If coming from here, making this turn, that would have to be considered. Um, and the, the folks at DHB are are, would, are in much better position to do that than me. What if um, one hundred and eight from Moonlight Brook up to the triangle was only northbound? And between that dangerous triangle at the top was only westbound, so that you create a counterclockwise path. Does that alleviate some hazards? Well, that is, I believe, uh, if I'm hearing you correctly, that is one of the things that we talked about with DOT is making the closure here so you keep. So that traffic is is going this way and improve improve this side. No, I was I was saying 108 north from where your arrow is. Make that one way north. Yes. Yep. And close the southbound lane, correct? Yes. Yeah. So and and the other street uh, from the top of your screen over to the intersection on the left would be one way from east to west. Almost creating a modified roundabout. Yeah, yeah. And you don't have a like traffic. Center. And yeah. someone, someone brought up the potential of could you turn this into a one-way triangle, um, which is essentially what you're talking about. Yes, it's actually a much bigger play in there. That if you came down this way, it would be a huge improvement with the road that involves a railroad track and being able to come in along the railroad track on an existing use, it's off of that map. 
It's yeah, it's down it, here. it changes everything, but here's the railroad. Then, here. Yeah, in an ideal world, you would come parallel to that railroad, and you come up at, at the road there and get on to 155 and avoid that altogether. In the lower corner there, it's a, there's a building, and a little further down is a gas station. And on the on the right are two fairly decrepit in bad shape residential buildings. That whole area would, in, in, again, in an ideal world, this would sort of be more of a taking situation, would be a big roundabout in there. And it would solve several problems. It would also solve some of the problems of getting around the railroad because that land was all bought up by a developer. The houses have already been removed. The, building, the, the development has not taken place. It's been stalled for a number of years. And you could actually come in along the railroad and avoid that road altogether. It would make a complete mm -hmm. circle into downtown. But I, I don't know. It's, that's way more money, way more expensive than probably anyone wants to talk about. Mm -hmm. so, but, so this is a... a pretty decent interim solution to a, to a bigger problem because of the, don't forget, you have the railroad there too. And when the yeah. gates come down, that whole thing backs up from the railroad all the way to downtown. Yeah. So yeah, this is an emergency vehicle signal because there there is uh, fire and EMS service that's down off to the right um, that comes out of this road and um, one to the south here. So that's what this signal is. It's, it's activated by the emergency, uh, by the vehicles and cars have to stop. But just to the south of it, there, yeah, there's the railroad crossing, which isn't, does it have gates or yeah. is it just the blink? Okay, it does it have gates. Yeah. Um, and that's that's the Amtrak line. Yeah. Um, and not to be overly optimistic, but with CSX buying Pan Am, there's a greater chance that, and the investment, you know, federal investment in passenger yeah. rail in the Northeast, there's the potential for more freight and passenger rail traffic along, along that route. Um, you, I've, I've spoken to the town planner. I don't know how you're a proponent, Peter, but there's a great spot for a passenger rail stop in Newmarket, right by downtown with the walking distance of downtown. Right now, that's not feasible because they literally can't fit any more trains on the tracks um, for the daily routine, um, but that's a future possibility. So. That would be awesome. I think it would be super awesome. I, the, the town planner, the new town planner, Bart, takes the train from Wells down to the Durham station and rides his bike into town for work, I, I believe. Um, says it takes him like half an hour total. Um, so, yeah, this is a big one. Um, but there are their interim opportunities again the main point is to improve safety here that that's our main goal all this other stuff is is, is all to improve the, the the danger to pedestrians and vehicles like like peter said it's all full of blind spots and that it's just one big blind spot so that was a lot um most of those thoughts and comments are in the um the project snapshots does anyone not want one printed out and we've already done it? Or I'm, I'm happy to go print them out um, so you can take them with you. Uh, yeah, we think that's you know, somewhere. I think, I think last month, either attack or. It was attack when I handed out our copies of the program. Okay. It's all blending. <laughs> Raise your hand if you want one. One, two. Cool. I will print them right now. Does anyone want a hard copy of the scoring sheet? Yeah, that's a big picture right there. So these pictures are not in the packets, just the area. I tried to send this, I tried to send this PowerPoint, and that's what got bumped from people. Well, that's so, that's all so this is not part of the packet. This is not part of the what I sent previously. So this pack we talked about is actually a very small pack. It's like two to three pages per project, including the safety data. I'll take that myself. That, that I can use that way. 
looking at pictures like this, squash them, a little piece of paper like this, I think it's almost useless. Yes, yeah. So yeah, one thing that helped me that you said, Colin, was the statistics on traffic flow, how many accidents, what type of accidents, who was hurt, who wasn't hurt. That kind of helped me decide in my mind which was more important than another spot. I tended to write things that had a lot of traffic uh, higher than the boats that had just a little bit of traffic. Mm -hmm. Trying to think of the biggest bang for the buck for the most people. Do, do you have Dropbox? Um, or anything like it? Because you could yes. put something like this on the Dropbox account and share the link. We can do a, we can do a OneDrive folder and make it Public. We can make that public, yeah. And just make sure it's it's uh, only. Yeah, so I'll try to yeah I'll try to drop this PowerPoint and the other materials in um, OneDrive link, and then so that you'll be able to access that remotely. The so. other thing that would be helpful <clears throat> is the results, the hard copy mm -hmm. copy of the results of the survey monkey. Yes, which I'm 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 looking at now. We have. 20 responses, it looked like people, some people kind of went through and did a little reconnoiter of the questions. Um, uh, but I think a third to a half were, were complete. So I've got some. Yeah, because I, I was hoping I could print off my responses oh, after, oh, after I was that. done and I'm like, hey, I can't. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, we can, I can, I'm looking at individual responses here, so I can, I can print those out. Uh, for today. Yes, we can do that. Any other questions on the 10 year plan? Sorry, all. Oh, thank you. Steve had it out. Okay. Stop. I think we're just down to other business. Okay. Wrap up stuff. And that and Commissioner Roundtable, anybody have anything you want to mention about the town? Um, just quickly, David Summersworth. Um, I think I've reported a couple of past meetings, our TAP grant and our CMAC grant. Um, maybe a month ago, or last week, we received a bid on the CMAC grant. I was telling Michael a little bit ago. Very favorable grant, unlike the TAP grant, it was within our budget. Um, it kind of bucked the trend of what's going on in construction value. But that project involves electronics, signal heads, new cabinets, some ADA uh, accessible curbing and access ramps. And fortunately for us, and I think for the reason it came within our budget, uh, and we, although we only got one bid, and it's a very familiar contractor, uh, electric light company out of, uh, they're just right over the border in Maine. And they do many services, traffic signal systems. They've done Dover. And they, they work on ours too. So we're excited about that. It's pending approval from DLT. I'm anticipating that probably within a month or two at the most, I think. Maybe a late fall or late, yeah, late fall, early winter start and then into the spring. Tap grant, a little more complicated. I think I, you know, that went over as reported, you know, uh, about 34% more than our budget. It's pending review. It appears to us, no one from the states here, but it appears the state is going to recommend approval of that yeah. and then give us, you know, all the additional information and requirements. There's, there's additional monies that will have to come with that and an additional <coughs> local match to the city because we're bumping the project up. Just a little over three hundred thousand. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the one that came in like thirty something percent. So thirty four percent. Single better. Yeah, single better. Yeah, I I did hear that they are going to be approving that. Yeah. So. Yeah, so it's good news. I mean, some of us have spent about five years on that project. It seems like <laughs> I used to have blonde hair. <laughs> <laughs> did not. <laughs> Was it blonde? That's all I have, dude. Well, yes, done. State has uh, signed off on the final 
stage for Stratford Square. And last night at the Public Works Committee, I was told that the contract has been sent to the city manager for signature, and then we should be seeing construction starting on the final phase of that, uh, hopefully by October. It's been in the works for like 20 years. <laughs> uh, so we're, we're pretty happy that that's. My son's not too happy about it because he lives right there. <laughs> Is he one of the driveways that got moved? Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> so so was, much for knowing people in high places. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he lives right above the funeral. So. Oh, talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. That was one of the most well attended public meetings I've been to for a single project. Uh, yeah. They had to do the church and they filled the room. Yeah. Here, I don't have any new market news, but I do have a question. I saw that the Biden administration just passed a massive uh, spending bill for electric vehicle infrastructure. And 35 states are targeted for spending. I couldn't find anywhere which, where those 35 states were. Do we have any? I haven't looked at it, but the New Hampshire plan was one of those approved. They mentioned New Hampshire specifically yeah, in the yeah. FDR news. Is that something that we can get some follow up on? Yes, I'll, I'll look that up. If DOT is going to be managing the electric vehicle charging funding through the, the BIL, the, the bipartisan infrastructure law, the transportation based funding. Um, and it's focused on building out I-89, 95, and 93. So well, it would just be nice to know where that, where that fits yep. with everything that's been going on with the VW settlement. Yeah, for sure. So now that that's been, I think they have to figure out where, how the funding gets, gets woven in because there's the separate RFP that they've actually gotten responses for, for the VW funding. Yeah. And so, yeah, we're going to have um, Tim White or Jessica Wilcox and folks at the ES kind of talk about that, um, that, that after this initial tenure plan does settle. Because there's, yeah, there's a lot to talk about. It, it came up, was it last policy meeting? Yeah. Um, yeah. Where, where folks had questions here. So, good reminder. Um, Oh, uh, we had a meeting on the 108 Complete Streets project mm -hmm. in Dover, Rochester, and Summersworth uh, yesterday. Yep. Um, so that project is, is moving forward little by little. Um, there will be more public outreach at this phase. To the three cities and, and SRPC are going to look at uh, the different ranges of alternatives for the different sections of that road. Um, it, was a, it was a good meeting, and uh, there'll be more to come. Um, that's going to be connected to, or it's going to have to be connected to the exit 10 study um, that's funded in 2024. And there will be a broader look at economic development potential and the connection between the turnpike and the cities. Um, that's all going to be happening together. So. And we, we appreciate Colin and, and Jen, you guys are going to host that meeting, I guess, right? Right. Uh, face to face. It'll be a Mid October, I think it's October. Uh, I think so. <laughs> but it'll still be here. It'll be here. Like the 28th, I think, of October. I think you're right. 27th. Yep. Yeah. So. <clears throat> it, we'll have to figure out where the, the extent of everything, but there will be sections where there'll be sidewalks on both sides, maybe a sidewalk on one side and a bike lane on the other, um, bus pullouts, um, and, and, and those sorts of things. So, more more connectivity. I so Jen, I didn't know that Rochester is moving the courthouse down to the intersection um, of Interstate Drive where the Granite State Business Park is. So there'll be apartments going in there and and the courthouse, the county courthouse, um, where it's currently in downtown. Um, so there, there there's a lot happening on that corridor with residents. Summersworth, I, I don't know where you guys are at that, that sports complex that's going to be there, but that's that's going to be right in the middle of that. Yep. So more more trips. Huge. Um, the, the list goes on. So, so. That's that. uh, all right. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. For a picture. So moved. I'll second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, everybody. Happy Friday.